everyone. Welcome to Storytime Saturday. My name is Joe. I'm a museum ambassador here at the ASU Art Museum. Today's story is going to be Uncle Andy's by James Warhola. Okay. Looking back on those days, the one thing I remember most is thinking my dad had the best darn job in the world. Our yard was always so much more fun than anyone else's in the neighborhood. My oldest brother was already away at college, but there were still six of us at home. Dad had lots of jobs, but for now he was mostly a junk man. Sometimes the neighbors complained that our yard looked like a junkyard. The real junkyard was about a mile away on a dirt road. It was up a really steep hill. It had everything. Old cars, old pop machines, and old airplane engines. You name it. It was there on the hill. Dad's job was to take things apart and separate the metals. Aluminum, copper, brass, steel. When there was enough, he loaded the truck and hauled it to another junkyard. Dad was always bringing home junk. Sometimes he'd say to me, now Jamie, this can really make good art. Then he'd put a bunch of it together in an interesting way. Mom was always yelling to Dad, for Pete's sake, Paul, quit junking up the house. And, Paul, when are you going to get rid of this stuff anyhow? But we liked playing in the junk. One day, Dad came home from work and announced, It's time to visit Bubba and Uncle Andy in the big city. We'll leave tomorrow morning. Oh, we're so excited. It was not often that we got to visit our grandma and our famous artist uncle in New York City. We had a lot of getting ready to do. Dad had work to do on the car. Mary Lou and Eva had to make sandwiches. Georgie and I had to pack the car. And little Maddie and Marty, well, they didn't do much. They were just in the way. The next morning, Mom woke us up extra early, and we were finally on our way. We saw nothing but cornfields and cow pastures at first. Then we slowly counted the seven tunnels that it would take us to get there. When we came to the last tunnel, we all perked up. All of a sudden, the world became very different. There were giant buildings, honking taxis, and people going every which way. Dad slowly wove his way uptown to Uncle Andy's. There we were, all eight of us standing in front of a huge black door, ringing the bell. After a long wait, the door unlatched and slowly opened. Uncle Andy peered out for a minute and then let out a long, Oh! Dad always thought it was best not to phone ahead so that it would be a surprise. It certainly worked. Uncle Andy was always very, very surprised. He showed us in, and we made our way to the kitchen where our grandmother was. Bubba drowned us with wet kisses, as she always did, and fixed us a dinner of salami, breads, and cheeses. Soon all the chattering and eating came to an end, and it was time for sleep. Uncle Andy showed us to our makeshift beds. I slept on the top floor on a propped-up old door covered with cushions. In the morning, I noticed I was surrounded by towers of soup boxes. I thought Uncle Andy and Bubba sure ate a lot of soup, but that wasn't it at all. Uncle Andy didn't buy the soup boxes. He built them out of wood and painted each one. They were art and really important, too, because Uncle Andy told us not to touch any of it. Dad always remembered to bring Uncle Andy something interesting from the junkyard. This time it was a giant magnet with a bunch of bolts stuck to it. Uncle Andy peered over his glasses at it really carefully, and after a pause he said, Oh gee, wow. Then we really knew he liked it. He decided that it should, that it should go right by the front door. Uncle Andy had 25 cats, all named Sam. They were always hiding in the house, that it was just like a giant amusement park. It was perfect for hide-and-go-seek and racing. It wasn't long before the six of us flying up and down the stairs through all the rooms like a band of wild monkeys.
Uncle Andy thought everything was art in some way or another. That's why his house was so fantastic. Each of the rooms was filled to the brim with all sorts of neat things. There were always new things to see. Right in the middle of the entranceway, there was a giant piece of crumpled metal. It looked like it might have gotten stuck there and couldn't go any farther. Uncle Andy explained to us, oh, that's a piece of fabulous art by a famous artist. We were impressed. Dad had a lot of that back home. Uncle Andy was always making art. We loved watching him paint in his studio. He made regular stuff like soup cans, pop bottles, and money look like real art. Uh, Mary, Lou, and Eva just loved his giant pictures of Elvis Presley. Mom, always aware of unnecessary clutter, asked, Gee, Andy, when are you going to get rid of this stuff? Uncle Andy startled and said, Oh, no, this is art. It's going to be worth a lot of money. Mom really didn't understand art. With all the commotion that we caused, Uncle Andy decided to, it might be better to put us all to work. It wasn't long before each of us had different jobs. He knew I liked to do art, so he let me help him with the giant paint-by-number sailboat painting. At night, Uncle Andy went out to parties to see other famous people. In the morning, we patiently sat by his door, waiting for it to open, so he could tell us all about who he had met. Once, Matty surprised Uncle Andy by going into his room a little too early. He let out a shriek because he didn't have his wig on yet. Of course, we all knew Uncle Andy was bald, just like Dad and Uncle John. Uncle Andy had wigs for every occasion. Messy makeup, messy wake-up wigs, multicolored afternoon wigs, and formal wigs for parties. He'd given Dad his old wigs, and back at home, we had a lot of fun with them. Each day was a chance to see something new. We especially loved hiding in the studio when Uncle Andy had important art people over to talk about his work. They would all huddle around the paintings, pointing and peering. They really thought Uncle Andy was onto something. I knew his paintings were super neat, and it made me want to do my own artwork when I got home. Finally, Dad announced, it's time to get us on home. That night, we had packed up all our things again. Mary Lou and Eva made the sandwiches, Bubba added a few salami. Um, Uncle Andy was on his way out the door with one of his soup can paintings when I told him we had to leave in the morning. He replied, oh, oh, really? I have to go out to sell this picture to a man waiting at the corner. You know, he's the taxi cab king. He really likes my artwork. Then I'm going to party. Oh, so you have a fabulous trip, Jamie. Bye. We went to bed early, and before I knew it, Mom was wiggling my, to wiggling my toes and saying, Time to get up. Bubba helped us with our things, and we trudged out into the dark morning. At the foot of the steps, there was a bunch of boxes that Uncle Andy had left for all of us. A lot of neat stuff, including art supplies for me. Bubba drowned us with those wet kisses as we got into the car. Soon we were weaving our way downtown to go through the first tunnel. We all fell asleep wondering about our next big trip back to Uncle Andy's. As we got older... We made many more trips back to that faraway city, and Dad continued bringing interesting junk from the junkyard for Uncle Andy. I really liked doing art, and I learned that art is something that is all around us all of the time. In the corner of my bedroom, I made an art studio of my own, and although Mom fretted and, frust and fussed as usual over what a mess it all was, she didn't make me clean it up. She even woke me up early on Saturdays to drive me to an art class. You know, I think Mom's finally understanding what art is all about. And that's the end. Hope you guys enjoyed.